Let's call the meeting to order. This is the uh, February 18th meeting of the Conway Board of Selectmen. Uh, it's 6.01. Uh, we're going to have uh, a meeting, a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 about the 2021 budget. We're being videotaped by Frontier Community Access Television for viewing by our residents and the public later on. Okay, first item on the agenda, the minutes. Does anybody have any additions uh, or changes to the minutes? Yeah, they look great, but they're fine. Okay, I'll make a motion that we accept the minutes for the February 10th meeting. Do I have a second? Second. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Next item, we have warrants. We have uh, a vendor warrant for $255,011, a payroll warrant for $114,155, and a payroll deduction warrant of $28,000. $695. Make a motion that we approve those warrants. Do I have a second? Yes, second. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. Meetings attended by select board members. Phil, what do we got? Uh, let's see. Tuesday the 11th was a Frontier Budget Subcommittee and then a Frontier Regional School Committee. Thus causing me to miss the Conway Historical Society board meeting. Um, Mm -hmm. the, uh, the 13th was Conway School Committee, the Conway Budget Conference first, and then the Conway School Committee uh, meeting. Both the Frontier and the Conway were uh, entailed passing the preliminary budget numbers, um, which look pretty solid, but uh, the process is the first February is the preliminary number mm -hmm. in March. Um, but uh, I think we'll, we'll talk about that later, but the numbers, I think it's the best school budget for both Frontier and, usually it's one or the other. If, if there's good news at all, it's one or the other. This is the first time in many years that both uh, the Conway budgets for Frontier and for the grammar school itself are gonna be uh, town assessments of well under 3% for each. So that's good. That's good. Robert? Uh, so a few things, we had a Conservation Commission uh, meeting this week and uh, maybe the, you know the, the thing about the most public thing that we did was we we approved the the uh, the, the pollinator uh, uh, half acre uh, along Route 116. So so now so that's approved. So it seems to us now that, and, and the reason that we were hurrying that a little bit was that they're anxious to get started and get supplies, and so they're ready when spring comes to actually start that project. Yeah. Um, so I did go to the cell town, the cell tower hearing that was one day this week, uh, right here with the planning board and the zoning board of appeals, um, and you, you probably will talk about it also. Basically, there was very little opposition. Uh, there was nobody in the meeting that was strongly opposed to it. There were a couple people who had some questions. Um, the cell tower company that wants to build it, uh, they had good answers and they seemed competent. And, and I thought everybody, you know, was, thought they were, you know, what they were doing was okay. Um, I think that people were pleased to hear it's an extremely low power. Uh, uh, it's, it's being built for an extremely low power transmitters. It'll basically transmit just from around where the Deerfield-Conway border is up to the top of the hill, maybe past the school. They sort of said maybe it will get down as far as the bank. And so the goal is that as you're driving up Route 116 into Conway, you won't have a break in your cell service uh, um, and then you will be picked up by the tower here in Conway um, as you go down the hill uh, toward the bank, and um, and that's the that's the area they're they're looking to cover. Um, it's you know there were people in the meeting who were not happy that they're not going to get Southern Conway, they're not going to get you know other places in town that don't have cell service, um, and they may do that or some tower company might come in and do that, but. This tower that they're building is a very, 100 watts, they're looking at 100 watts of, 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 of broadcast. Um, 
Uh, it's not going to have a red light on it that some people were nervous about. You know, it's probably not. It's it's only visible from a couple spots uh, in Conway, and it's when it is visible, it's not noticeable, you know, it's not a noticeable rise above the horizon uh, unless you knew to look for it. Um, and then we also had a cable advisory meeting on Friday with, uh, with Comcast and we think we and Comcast have agreed on, we, we think we and our Comcast rep have agreed on what it is we're asking for um, a, a certain amount of money that we can buy some capital equipment and then some additional, the, the, the normal um, quarterly payment that Comcast makes that we mostly give to, uh, th that runs FCAT, thank you very much, Dan. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, but, but Comcast is taking that back to their, the, the, you know, the higher management for approval. So we're gonna be having another meeting in a week or two that will see how see how that went. So, mm -hmm. so that was it. Okay, great. Uh, I had a uh, Massachusetts Municipal Association board meeting, as did Tom. Tom was with me. Um, we were together at that board meeting because we have uh, we have the we have District One sewn up for Conway. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Uh, very interesting meeting, our first meeting of the year after the uh, annual meeting. Uh, then we had the uh, Local Government Advisory Commission, Tom was also at that, and uh, we were sworn in again for another year by the Lieutenant Governor to serve on that commission. Uh, also another, we always have interesting meetings with the Lieutenant Governor and her secretaries, her cabinet secretaries, so that was, that was good. I had a uh, Massachusetts Selectmen's Association board meeting uh, last week to plan our educational meetings for this year. Um, I also had an MMA personnel and fair labor policy committee meeting. Uh, we discussed many interesting things on personnel matters that are happening in the state. Uh, I was also had a Zoning Board of Appeals meeting where we um, gave some variances to the proposed cell tower, which will be 156 feet total, uh, and it will look like a pine tree. A very strange looking pine tree, but it will look like a pine tree. We've all seen them. Yes, we've all seen them. Uh, and it's, it's not going to interfere won't have very much scenic impact except for, as Bob mentioned, a couple of places in Conway. And it will um, increase cell service for an area in Conway that presently does not have cell service. Cell service, so that's, that's good. Um, and that was it for me, for meetings last week. Do we have any public comments? Ladies, do you have any public comments? Uh, no, no, you're an no agenda. Yeah. You're an yeah. agenda. Good. Okay. We have no old business. Oh, one, one thing about that, um, the Local Government Advisory Commission meeting. Did you get a copy of this Transportation and Climate Initiative? Uh, it's in the back here. Yes. It, it is in there? Yes. yes. Okay, good. That was something that was handed out there that I thought um, I'd uh, uh, make sure that you guys got a copy of. Yeah. Thank you, Tom. Uh, okay, we have new business. We have the town newsletter, possible committee. Do we have? Uh, yeah, please come. Come on, ladies. Come on up to the hot seats. Happened to me. I expected her. We just uh, tried calling. Hopefully, she's on her way. Do you, uh, do you really want to? Um, why, why, don't we, why don't we hold off on this until you want to do a couple of other things first? Just case you pass on our way. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the discussion and vote on the letter to legislators regarding proposed legislation on host community agreements. Uh, did everybody read that letter? Yeah. I did. Okay. Did you like that letter? You know, last week I. I uh, spoke out against the, uh, signing a letter before knowing what was in the letter. Um, it turns out that 
the, I disagree with the letter less than I disagree with the changes in the law. Um, so, okay, uh, this is a simple letter of support. Yes, yes, yes. So, so, so what is yeah, yeah, so, so in my own way, uh, I, the letter of support is something I, I, I've assigned. I, the, the, I, I got a chance to read the law. I don't like how it takes away power from the towns. I agree with some of what they did, but I think that it, the cure is worse than the disease. So, um, so, so, I, think, so I think the letter is So we're against this law? That is correct. Yes, we're against this law. Yes, yes. Therefore, because it will take power away from the locality. Correct. So therefore, we are in favor of the letter. You're in favor of the letter. Yeah, yes, yes. You're in support of the letter. Yes, yes. OK. We're doing good here so far. <laughs> yeah. Bob, what do you think? Uh, no, I support it. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, I do as well. I, I, I support the opposition to yeah. the law. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm sure we have that clear now. Yes, I'll, yes. I'll make a motion. <clears throat> I'll say we it. support the letter opposing the law. The change. Uh, yeah. 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 The, the, the change in the law yeah. um, regarding proposed legislation right. on the host community agreements. I will second. Okay. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Unfortunately, we don't have a copy of the letter here, but uh, I'll have one on the table and people can come in and sign it Good at idea. their convenience. Okay. All right. We have uh, an appointment. We have Hope um, Prolius to the Board of Registrars mm -hmm. through. 6-30-2023. Do we have uh, any comments on that? Thank you. Yes, yes. well done. Good Thank point. You. Yeah. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve the appointment of uh, Hope uh, Crowley to the Board of Registrars through um, June 30th, 2023. Yes. Do I have a second? Yes. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Okay. Good. Okay. First thing, a new business. The Finance Committee isn't here, so we'll go on to items not anticipated 48 hours in advance. Okay, um, the town clerk has proposed March 9th as the uh, town caucus, the citizens caucus. Have you guys seen this? First I heard. No, we just printed today. Aha. Uh -huh. Great. I Bill, did you see this? Um, no, I did not see, did see it. March 9th at 8 o'clock. Um, I think that that's pretty good. Okay, good. No, well, it'll just be right after our select board meeting. Right. I'll make a motion that we sign the warrant for the town caucus. Do I have a second? Second. Yes. All in favor? Yes. Aye. Okay. This is the 18th day. And it's right here, town hall. Yeah. And right here in town hall. Is there any question? <clears throat> All right, next item on the agenda is our uh, town administrator update. Some doings in committees. Uh, Jerry Fenton is working with the Council on Aging and per in particular the chair, Pat Lynch, to develop a weekly Healthy Bones and Balance program at the town hall to be conducted once a week starting in April. He has a group of about six that would like to meet regularly on Tuesdays at 10 a.m. for this free program developed by RSVP of Pioneer Valley. Gary has been certified by RSVP to do this HBB program and will do it on a voluntary, no fee basis. So, uh, what I know about that program is that it's it is given at the Y also, so and I know a number of people at the Y who take it and like it a lot. I, I you know, I, uh, uh, and, and do, you, do you take it? Well? I don't take okay. it. No, but um, it, it's it just. I know we don't. We seem like we have a couple minutes here, but you, you know, um, 
At the Y, it also is free, and you don't have to be a member of the Y. So the Y is hosting it, much like we're going to be hosting it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so th it's the only program I know of at the Y that you don't have to be a member of the Y, and you can come and do this program at the Y in Greenfield. Good. Okay. I understand that Roaring Glen has been granted a provisional license. I sent a notification of this to the select board and under other interested parties on Thursday. Carrie Ann Petrick, the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Coordinator for the Berkshire Hilltown region, which includes Conway, confirmed that CPA funds are an eligible match for MVP funding and that both Arlington and Braintree have used CPA funds as match for MVP projects. And I, I would just note that with Conway, that will complete the uh, Arlington, Braintree, Conway, the ABCs of CPA, MVP, do re mi. <laughs> whoa, whoa. Very good, Tom. Uh, in departmental news, Comcast sent an additional roughly $10,000 in payment owed the town for raised franchise fees that we had not been given as should have happened automatically with a rise, as I understand it, in the eighth year from 3% to 8%. To 4%. Uh, from 4%. 3 to 4? Yeah, 3 to 4. 3 to 4. The legal limit is 5, so, uh, right. so as much uh, as I would love 8%, you know, the, the feds have I something to say about that. Eileen apologized and said she had not spoken about it to the Cable Advisory Committee because she wanted to be sure of the numbers. How does that happen? I've checked with other small towns, and none said that they require the full Screw firefighter up. physicals for junior firefighters. So a regular physical will be sufficient to establish an appropriate baseline for town employment and insurance. Okay. We've been awarded $20,000 through the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership for Town Forest Stewardship Plans to complete an inventory assessment and plan for two town forests including education of and collaboration with town residents in regard to forest stewardship. Is that going to be handled through uh, FERCA? Yeah. yeah. Do you know where the town forests are? Which two? The, the, the one down near State, State Farm? Yeah. Right? The Conway State Farm? This is, this is the uh, Fournier property and near the Old Town Cemetery. Those are the two town okay. forests. Uh -huh. so uh -huh. Why are we automatically going through FERCA? They offered to write the grant for us. But we've been awarded the money. Yes. So what's the grant for? For hiring the people to do it. So that's something other than a grant. That's some kind of what? The grant's for the money. And, and it's, it's going to do this inventory and assessment and write a plan. And at least two public sessions to get town residents uh, to learn about various options and to give their input into those options. So that that's where the twenty so the twenty thousand dollars is just going to go to two meetings for the town and for COD work for forestry plans for those two parcels. Yeah, and that may include logging or it might not. It might include a an emphasis on habitat management or multi-purpose management, which is the new thing in forestry. So uh, we haven't had a forestry plan done for 20 years anyway. So what's what's the or committee that's like in charge that. of this? I'm sorry. No, the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership. Yeah. What was the um, the committee that came in for the support for for, for filing for it? Um, Beth. Beth Gershman is the town's representative to the partnership. But there, there's no, and she just functions as a. She's one of usually. She, she's Conway's rep on the on the partnership. Then there's about 25 to 30 people on the probably the board, and she's our Conway rep. I mean, because if it, 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 are we required to go to for? I mean, the, the, if there's twenty thousand dollars and you want to educate town residents to do certain things. Um, it, that twenty thousand dollars could be like a cash incentive to town residents to do certain things. We'll, we'll, um, we'll get we'll get some uh, some more details on that. So, Tom, mm -hmm. would you check into that? Be happy to send a copy of the grant proposal. Okay. 
Um, for the flag raising for the Child Abuse Awareness Month, uh, Samantha Stalins, a case manager with the Children's Advocacy Center of Franklin County and North Quabbin, Inc., is proposing 10.30 on Monday, April 13th. Okay, what do we have to do for that? I think just show up. They will have um, publicity and uh, probably a statement from the local district attorney. Um, uh, David Sullivan did show up to Greenfield. That's e okay, that's Easter Monday. So, yeah, that's... And that was the date the select board uh, right. shows. Okay. Yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll be there on the morning of the 13th of April for that. Uh, let's, let's check to see what's expected of us. If, you know, any major addresses are planned, you know, Bill. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Any questions for Tom? Anything? Uh, do you think do you think Pat's coming? Um, well, she could have mistaken the time and might be here at six thirty. But in the interest of okay, maybe at least pushing us a little, we can we can we can wait for. It. We have a couple of other things we can still um, do. Yeah, I'm, I have to leave at six thirty. So uh, it'll be that in a moment. So we yeah, talk is it okay, okay if we just Let's talk? Cause go, go for it. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is about the. Um, the, new the newsletter yeah. that might replace the visitor or will replace the visitor. That's the plan. Yeah. Well, do you want to start? Do you want to start? We have, we have well, a short piece okay. from Pat uh, a couple oh, of days ago. Oh, she did send it to you. Oh, that's so we, we got that. Okay. Well, that's basically the, the things that we've been discussing. As far as, um, why is it important? Perfect. Um, well, as you know, the visitor has kind of uh, had some changes with the church no longer are sponsoring the visitor. And when we heard that, several people in town, including the three of us, had talked about wanting to keep it going. Mm -hmm. We all are sort of into historical um, things and to see the newsletter abruptly and simply because there was no other way to make that happen um, was something that was distressing to all of us and um, so we had been, has, the, has the visitor actually ended as far as i know the printed vi visitors ended okay. um, marcus had been looking into having the high, the franklin tech school sort of do an online version right um, and that they would be overseeing the production of it during the school year and then he would according to his last letter um, be editor editing the summertime and then it would go back to the high school mm -hmm. um, but in doing a strictly online newsletter it isolates a portion of the town that does not um, do computer type work and it's plays such a vital part in the town like even before I was a member of this town um, I look forward to reading the visitor when I would come down to the end you know um, it kind of puts your finger on the pulse of what's happening in town and to to think of that ending um, just didn't seem to be a, something that any of us wanted to see happen and um, it plays such a vital role in the communication of the town that we were hoping that the town would be willing to support its continuation going further without um, making a big input uh, impact on the financial resources of the town, but enough to keep it going, knowing that there is a, a certain amount of um, funds that get generated by potential ads of people that um, would be still advertising the newsletter mm -hmm. and um, when it was researched about $2,500 a year is generated from that income 
um, as it stands now, but depending on how the newsletter looks, we might end up generating more than that, um, depending on how it's, it's structured. Mm -hmm. And that there would still be some cost to the town um, to cover the cost of mailing and um, I guess the printing part. Say, so, say, so Alan, uh, Tom, come yeah. on up, come on up and listen, listen to this, please. Yeah. Come on in. So, um, so that is something that we are looking for support for, and also if the town's unable to contribute as much as needed, we would also look for grant sources as well because of its vital nature to the community and. Do, do you do you ladies have a budget to uh, suggest? Um, I just have the operating budget that w had been done in the past. I haven't had a chance to look that far into it ourselves. Um, let's see. I know there was some mention in here. In the visit, the last visitor, it's, he stated that it cost thirty five hundred to yeah. put out, but they got twenty five hundred from the residents. So, that's so a year. Correct. 3,500. But that was, of course, with the huge amount of volunteer effort to do all the folding and the stapling. And the right, right. So with this transition from the visitor to a town newsletter, what do you think the budget might be? I, I, I think a, a lot of the stuff that, uh, that might cost money in other circumstances, we could do ourselves. I know for, for myself, I have folding machines at home. I have all sorts of, of things that we could utilize um, to make the newsletter happen without having to go outside to have those things done. Plus, I have a lot of time on my hands. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I, I wondered, that, you know, because the, sort of what their budget is, is sort of a separate, qu or might be, is a sort of a separate question from what the town would need to contribute. Because right. there's been $2,500 well, a year. Well, I'm trying to figure out a bottom line here. Right. Mm -hmm. Because if, if we make a line item out right. of it, okay, to support mm -hmm. the newsletter, yep. uh, you know, they mm -hmm. have what we need to support and what they may be able to get from donations and ads. So we know just from Marcus's letter that it was a th it's a thousand dollars difference between what, so we know the starting out. Is, is, is that realistic? We hard to say. I think a yeah. lot of people probably contributed to uh, the visitor because it was, was something a, that came out of the church. Sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's, exactly. okay. so you don't know. Yeah. So if, if, if you looked at the $2,500 in donations because it was a church situation and now it's not, do we need to cover that $2,500, you think? I would say, I, I would say, yes. I would say it, something would have to be covered, but we have, as, as a group, we haven't sat down to, to break down to see how much of it was contributions from the church as opposed to income that was generated from ads and other things. So I don't know, we're not, I know I'm not in a position if, to if be you, able to. If you had to that. estimate right now a total cost for the newsletter moving forward, what do you think per year? We know Four, the mailing costs, right? 4,000? It, uh, it was 185 or something. John, I think you had that figure. That's close to it. Yeah. Per, per issue, so per issue. Meadow, yeah. It depends on the size. And it bit, does depend on that. But, but that should be about right. Um, so the that's thing. a month, so that would be fifteen hundred dollars. So, so cool. Right. Well, how many? Twelve months. Yeah. I I, I think, think I think a monthly okay. one would be. Call it two hundred dollars a month. That's twenty four hundred. Okay. Now, what do we need for printing? I can print. I have a machine that's read fifty thousand copies a month. And well, what does and it cost costs, for it costs paper, paper and paper and something? What? So what would you say that would? I'd say a box of paper, has staples, eight and a half by eleven. It's probably about thirty bucks. That'll last you. It's five hundred sheets a ream. It's ten reams, so it should last you quite a little while. How um, many pages is this letter going to be? Well, it was always something on the order of twenty-four pages. Right. Yeah. Well, twelve and twelve front. Right. You know, front yeah. back, so twenty-four pages. Um, yeah, and it depends on, I, I think a, a good idea would be maybe to contact people and find out, would you prefer to have your newsletter 
strictly and paper, or would you prefer to have it online? Get mm -hmm. some kind of an idea as to whether we can bring that number down. I think it was something like 800 were printed each month. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. yeah. So that might bring the number down. There's a lot of unknowns here, so it's a little bit difficult to budget. Well, I'm just trying to get at right. what's the what's right. the what's the maximum you think it would be? Five thousand. He's going up. Five yeah, thousand. Yeah. <laughs> because well, we need to put well, something we, in the we warrant. Can, we can put something in the budget yeah. for it. Yeah. Okay. We don't want you to be short on it. Right. Right. If we go a little over and you know you're you're under, well, that's fine. You want to be less. Than, that's always better. Is five thousand good? I would say if we had five thousand, we'd make it work. Yeah. I think we would. We <laughs> okay. What do you think, Finance Committee? I think that if once it goes on uh, in terms of donations, mm -hmm. once it's however many people in town would be aware of it, once it's on the budget. People may think, well, we're, I'm contributing. You know, that hmm. being on well, the they're wall, already a contributor. Yeah, yeah. Right. My, my, mm -hmm. you know, besides the, the church affiliation, you know, mm -hmm. right. So that, I, I, but there's, there's, just, yeah. the way there's still the ad revenue though, and so which which brings up the associated right. question is, yeah. when there is ad revenue, can the town somehow segregate that and keep count of yeah. what yeah. that is so that we can right. track? What? Well, well, the ladies, yeah. well, like they say, well, they, once they figure things out, we'll, <coughs> well, well, if we budget it slightly high, then it becomes a, you. a little free cash for next year. I mean, you know, it's not the money that doesn't go right. away. Right. No. No. Of course, well, <laughs> as Louise says, there are a number of unknowns here. Yeah. Yeah. So we, we want to make sure we cover the unknowns, yeah. the uncertainties, the contingencies. I, I think the most, the most important financial aspect is um, that anything other than what we already have a line item for has to be approved by town meeting before we can spend any money mm -hmm. on that. So I have, Let's put it into another budget. I, I have a mailing, um, and which will be good for 2021. Mm -hmm. To get us through to then, I have a mailing budget, so I can ask the Finance Committee for extra money if I need that for my mailing budget from the Reserve Fund. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I have an office supplies budget, so I can, I, if that takes up money, I can do that sort of thing. What we can do, of course, is supply, is, is pay for labor, but right. if the labor is going to be donated, then that takes care of the major problem there. So there we have, you know, labor and materials and postage, and I think that um, will be enough to get us through um, and and then we, we can think, you know, over the next couple of weeks about about a more refined budget and yeah. and get something in the uh, in the warrant for that. All right. So you're going to work that out with the with the ladies and the yeah. budgets and the finance committee. Yeah. Okay. And the town treasurer will get the ad revenue. If you still want to sell ad revenue, I don't know what happened. Yeah. The, the ad revenue will will have to go into the general fund. It can't be applied directly to the cost of the committee. <coughs> I, I certainly think the value of the letter to the community huh. is far more than five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Okay. Trying to get in. Then I like the idea of, of having people say, "I knocked out and get Yeah, exactly. <coughs> yeah. And, so, and many people that have the comfortability with using a computer will print their own if they choose. But there's also, if we don't offer as a um, a hard copy option, we will be uh, doing a disservice for the people Definitely. that oh, yeah. feel yeah, yeah, yeah. like they they would lose that sense of community and sense of communication. Absolutely. So that would be terrific Absolutely. to be able to So is, is that is that you know yeah. okay with everybody? We'll figure it out. Okay. And you understand that you'd be a town committee. Well, that's <laughs> that's what I was going to ask you yeah. is is would we be set up as a formal committee, and if so. Who's it under? It's uh, under us. <laughs> um, but I mean, you would so, so you would have to do the online ethics training, which is two hours, and nobody. Oh, I've done it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> um, it's and, so uh, much fun. <laughs> yeah, you would get an appointment. You would get appointments. You would be a board. You would get appointments. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, yeah, all those. Whatever all those needs little, to happen, it's such a vital, details will be a vital function for the town. I think that people are willing to make that. But when, when you're thinking about what your budget is, you know that 
Um, it's one thing to just put a, pick a comfortable number that you want, to, but the higher the number, the more likely it is that people are going to have a problem with it. Right. So it well, would be it would be to everybody's benefit to just ask for what you know you're going to need or what you can reason and like, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and and we'll know more after comfort. the first year. Actually, we'll know more after the first couple of issues. That's right. <clears throat> right. And then we can refine it. And you could you could include it right in the town website. So so for the online portion, exactly. it, it could just you, you could direct people to the town website. To, to right. Read. And even, you know, the warrant can say one thing and you can always lower the number at town meeting as well. Exactly. Um, you can't raise it though. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, so I'll, I'll make a motion that we support the, um, the successor to the visitor and Tom will work it out with the finance committee yeah. and the ladies are new <laughs> newsletter committee. Okay. Um, um, we'll, we'll make formal appointments to that if that's... Yeah, we'll, that. yeah, we'll, we'll, yeah, and I think it's going to be Pat and Louise and Kathy. I right. don't know whether Veronica, you want to be there involved there in that or not. Um, <laughs> she does. Of I will she definitely does. be helping out, so that's okay. fine. That's fine. Great. What would the relationship be between this and what Marcus would do with the tech school? Would, would they be the well, same or? I, we, I haven't spoken to Marcus. I've only, um, uh, I had been in touch with him when that was still a viable option um, to have it as a, as a paper uh, situation when it was still supported by the church. So I don't, I don't know, but I'm sure we'll be able to report that. Okay. Um, and also the name, is it the name with the church if you, if you use the name still? Does, well, it, does it need a new name? It, 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 I think it's going to need a new name. I think it yeah. probably should have a, a new name. Uh, so we haven't talked about that. Well, it may be something that the, that the town will vote on. Who yeah. knows? You know, there's so much that we can do with it. Mm -hmm. All right, we have a motion. Do we have a second? Yeah. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate your efforts. Thanks. Thank you. That's great. Yeah. Thank you so much for your support. Nice to Thank you. Thank you for stepping in. Stepping forward. Okay, the finance committee is here. Yes. Yeah. All right, we can do our joint meeting with the finance committee. I have uh, some handouts here of the uh, basic numbers for the schools. You have two of those sheets over there, and one of them's at the end over there where the, where the third set of papers was, but unfortunately it needs to go down to the other end of the table now. School, school, school and budgets. I'm, and I'm afraid you have to share, because I, I only have uh, two pages. Sorry about that. Um, so school budgets, the scary thing. Yeah, so this shows uh, the basics for the Conway Grammar School, Frontier Regional High School, and the two technical schools. Uh, you can see also uh, operating budget broken out from transportation. We still do that, and I'm not sure why we do it. It takes up extra space on Article 2, and I'm wondering if there um, is anybody who might be involved in school affairs uh, around here who might be able to explain why uh, historically we've split out the operating and the transportation for both Conway and, and the front and frontier um, on the budget. Yeah. Well, well because, because the frontier <coughs> transportation is subject to the state regional transportation reimbursement, whereas the Conway transportation is all on the town. So uh, okay. So so we could trans we we could combine the Conway. Operating and transportation budgets. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, mean you, I, I think that would probably be a good thing to do in this warrant. Thank you. Yeah. I've been wondering about that for years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, frontier transportation is a completely different animal, though. And you know, the the uh, the the Conway transportation number might always be good, just for, so that people know it, just because. Right. If there is a K through 12 regionalization, then we would get reimbursed with that as well. And so that's that's always something that um, it's nice that people can know that in the back of their heads because sooner or later, yeah. sooner or later, the numbers say we're headed in that direction. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying I, I should leave it as is? Well, there's merit to leaving it as is. Um, but 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 I understand. We're not expecting that to happen anytime soon. 
<laughs> so, well, there's so in, in the in the new budget there is money for, there is money for this to happen. Yeah. Um, well, so so that's good. Yeah. Um, it, it, it it may it may it we, may gain traction. The state is pushing this. You know, we we get our share of Frontier's transportation, right? And we put that separately in Article Two. Right. We get our sh our share, which is the total share of Conway <coughs> Ground School transportation. Right. And we put it in. In both cases, it's Conway's share that we're paying. It's part of um, their operating budget. This is separate from what's being reimbursed, which they account for otherwise. They're, they're not charging us something and then getting money back that they don't return to the town. They're just charging us for our share. Right? Right. So, I, again, I don't see any particular need to to separate, they're, they're, it's really part of their operations. And I understand that. Um, but they're, they're separate contracts, right? The transportation is a separate contract. It, we, it we go out to us as part of the operating so, budget of the school. So we, we, with the Union 38 contracts with Gripco in the same exact cycle as Frontier. And so, act, and, and, and the agreements are structured, the contracts are structured. Um, with the reimbursement potential of the frontier transportation in mind, um, so the the, the school I mean, I, I, what, what, contracts like it, don't break out. Uh, I, mean, uh, I, I, I doubt whether we're legally required to separate them. I mean, I, I, you're, you're probably onto something there. Yeah. But um, there there there's wisdom in 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 focusing on what the state re because that number from the state reimbursement is remarkable. How that single issue determines our school budget and which determines our town budget. But and we don't see that reflected in the number in our warrant. All we see is our share of next year's transportation. Right. Which right. is really, it's part of their operating budgets. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, and so isn't, uh, so isn't the health care in a sense for them. You know, why isn't the health care for all the employees let's, part let's, of the school budget? Let's keep it separate. That's what I, mean. <laughs> I think you have to leave it alone. Mm -hmm. But what, just to save a space on a piece of paper? Uh, I have innumerable logistical details I worry about. <laughs> exactly. A lot of people talk about transportation as a separate item. Yeah, let's let's just leave it separate. I know you want to save space, Tom. Well, okay, well, I'll, I'll fold the, the, the newsletter probably into my own budget. <laughs> <That'd be fine. laughs> okay. All right, so what are we going to go over here? The school budget? Yeah, Phil, I mean, can you give us a, a so, rundown? So these are, uh, these are remarkable numbers um, in terms of the overall impact on the assessment is as gentle and kind as you could ever hope for. Yeah, we're talking about we're talking about Frontier. Well, we're talking about both, but uh, I can start with what Frontier. Do you, what, do you like. talk, what do you want to talk yeah. about first? Um, I guess we can go with Frontier since... Okay. The, That's since, a more detailed one. Yeah. yeah. And, and so... Um, what instead of, instead of going over this line by line, what, do you, can you tell us where the where the big changes are? The the big change was in um, the the transportation uh, reimbursement for the frontier w was was higher. It was seventy two percent this year. It was sixty what four last year. It's been in the fifties. Um, so so that's. A, a significant number. The, you know, you, you you wish that you would get that number sooner, so that you could do some semblance of long-term planning, because that number is so significant to the health of the school in general. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when the law was written, which induced the, the town to regionalize, it was a hundred percent. It was only after twenty years of a hundred percent that they started uh, cutting back on that dramatically. Um, and, and we were we were so close that we were so, the the big number as, as well to remember is that it would have cost fifty eight million more to fully fund at hundred percent all the regional transportation in the state for the whole state for yeah. the whole state and instead of doing that uh, we did add one point one billion to the state's rainy, rainy day fund um, so you know that. And for our, there's no more single budget line item in the state that's more significant in the state budget every year um, 
uh, you know, besides like the overall chapter 70 and chapter 90 numbers, there's no, there's no individual line item that's more significant than the regional transportation reimbursement mm -hmm. in terms of the effect on our budget. Yeah. So um, the, the other thing that is to our benefit, we, the, it's the second year of the Frontier uh, Teachers contract is, is for next year, so that's a 2%, um, which was also a, a, a fair contract and uh, good for everybody. The, um, and, and, and also the, the, the capital committee taking some of what used to be in, would have normally been in the operating budget, like the emergency repairs that are necessary, things like that that are, that are now being done through uh, a capital budget, which is um, something that in the 50 years of the school had never been done prior to this year. And uh, it's, it's a pretty good institutional achievement to get a capital budget off the ground as well as uh, you know the ordinary budget. And so that, that took pressure off of the budget. Um, and uh, all, the, the other thing is that uh, Student enrollment spiked this year. There was a significant increase in student enrollment, mostly from Sunderland. The um, what kind of numbers? The, uh, forty something. Wow. Um, more students. They found yeah. They found yeah. More students. And, and actually, um, they, the <laughs> frontier ended up saying no to school choice um, uh -huh. on almost all grades because wow. they, they they have a track so that they know you know they don't want to say yes to that one kid yeah. who's going to make them have to get another teacher. Yeah. Um, and and so they have that all. And, and so Frontier's the a beneficiary, unfortunately, of the many problems that are going on at Pioneer and Mohawk sure. and Gil Montague. And so each of those districts lost students to, to Frontier. But not this um, year. Um, they're cutting back on that. They, they, they said no to more. I mean, there, there, there was a, um, yeah, they, they said no to even so more. The, but they did, they the, did take in. So the students that are still there will keep going, but right. no seventh graders coming in. Right. And the other thing to, to, to know is that Frontier is the last remaining school, public school, in the county that is not underwater on the school choice and charter, meaning that Frontier still this year makes, re receives more revenue from school choice students than it sends out in students who are going to charter schools. And when you consider that it's 5000 that you get for each uh, school choice student, and you're paying eighteen thousand for each charter student. It requires more than three school choice, three and a half school choice kids to make up for one charter kid, and they're doing that still, um, which is a, a great credit, I think. And um, with the last one that's not underwater, it's having a terrible impact on the other towns, the other you know, Greenfield areas. Yes. Yeah. Um, so for all those reasons, it, it came in at a good. The other thing is that. We finally have a, an administration team in place that is good to go, and um, that that like I, I the the our business manager has been a huge upgrade, um, not not just from the consultant, but even from the prior occupant of that position, and um, you know and, and and the the superintendent is fantastic. Our new facilities director is just. That was a big improvement as well, and e e even some of the, the so, some of the things that resulted, some of the savings in the budget. When you go through it, it was remarkable how they went through the assumptions that underline the budget to really check back on past practices and see whether all of those assumptions were more conservative than they needed to be. Um, especially since the consultant last year was openly conservative about everything because they didn't want to get caught. Whatever, and so they went through it, and they trimmed a lot from the budget that was just based on time is re revealed it to be overly conservative estimates, and so that a lot of the budget requests were done. Just uh, so I, I was very pleased with the way that the whole process. And um, sounds like you fully endorse this budget. <laughs> yeah, um, it's it's as good as it's going to get. It's as good as it can be. What's what's the Conway uh, assessment percentage of the? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I didn't see. I didn't see it. Um, is it ten percent, eleven percent, twice right? So the Conway assessment percentage is up to sixteen point six three. Sixteen point six three percent. And yet the total assessment to the town only went up thirty three thousand total, or two point one seven percent. That's because they had those thirteen kids in town last year. Right? Um, and how many, how many kids are there from town? And do you know? Eighty one. We're up one from last year. 
So no missing kids down there. <laughs> That's good. No, we still, so we still do have um, the highest percentage of kids uh, that, that go to charters of the four towns. Oh, from here. From here. Um, it still is an issue with the other three towns. Um, and, and we're the bend right now. Um, one of the things that we do is that all of the, all of the charter kids, that, instead of that, that amount being assessed to each town, like Conway, you have 10 kids, you owe 180,000 or whatever, the, that number that is, is treated as uh, an, an expense to the region, and it goes through the regional formula. So, um, which benefits our town tremendously. So, uh, but, but, but and, and right now the number of charter kids from Conway almost is equal to the number of total charter kids from the other three towns combined. Hmm. Where are these charter schools? For, Fort Rivers. Fort Rivers and PVPA. And PVPA, and uh, we have, I think, three now in the Chinese. Chinese um, and. Where's Fort River? In Fort, Greenfield. Fort, Fort Rivers is Fort Green, Greenfield Community College parking lot. Okay. It's just past BJ. It's right, kind of near GCC. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, so our our assessment has only gone up two point one seven percent. Yeah. What I like about these numbers is, is that yeah. the Conway's enrollment is very flat. We have yeah. We, we we send almost exactly the same number of kids there every year for the last many years. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Right and. Um, yeah, and not everybody's was flat. It's that that, no. that that EQV formula works its magic, yeah. and um, Waitley Waitley has new municipal income and new town income, and so they have a almost a six percent hit, even though they lost students wow. um, at Frontier. That's so part of the funding because of the funding formula. Yeah, the magical science. Oh. Wow. So, and you, Phil, in your, your opinion, estimation of the uh, of a 2.12 percent increase that's projected year on year, I mean, what percentage is from negotiated, renegotiated union contracts? Is it, is it more than three quarters? Is it, what do you think? Um, off the top of your head. Yeah, each each percentage was it, it, uh, for every one percent is, is is almost eighty thousand to the budget. All right. So um, that's pretty much all. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Are you doing a Conway, the grammar school too? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have summer right, just for that. Yeah, we do. We're, so yeah. We're, yeah, we do. We're in, we're in good sh good shape on that budget. We didn't find now, any more students. Now that's just the draft. Are we going to expect any surprises? <laughs> so, no. no um, yeah. The, the, yeah. The the. Right, the only, the, of all of the uncertainties that remain, more of them trend towards the possibility of increased revenue than they do towards increased expenses. That's good. So, um, okay. No, no, no. All right, now Conway Grammar School, what do we got there? So, uh, yeah, so Conway Grammar School, the, um, the, operating, the operating budget's only go is 2.16 increase. The the most the most of the it's going to be in transportation. Yeah, so there's yeah. two point four altogether. Yeah, um, and um, so um, so part of that is the um, it is the grant for thirty thousand dollars that was obtained that's paying for. Um, for, for some of the maintenance work that's going on in the school. Right, um, right, okay. Part of it was again the building facilities manager coming in and taking a look at some of the historic, uh, the accounts and um, what the basis was for the building accounts um, and, and trimming them. Um, um, also, uh, three of the items were taken sort of off the budget and put into the capital request. Okay. So I guess it's, yeah, three of the items. And so that's going to be a separate uh, article. I don't know if you saw, if you saw that. I haven't seen any of this. Yeah, we're going to go over that. All right. A separate list. Yeah, okay. So, so that. Um, so, so, last so, so, so one of them is for Frontier and one of them is for the grammar school. Mm -hmm. So total schools, last year we went up over 
This year we're going up 1.4%. Big difference. Oh, big difference. And, and the, when you think about last year, the increase in the frontier assessment was 12%? Yeah. And this year it's 2%? 2%. Mm -hmm. And yet the budget... I, I tried to tell people last year that it wasn't really the school's fault, that the budget was responsible, that that's sort of how the numbers worked, especially when... The, it, 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 the, the, just the, a small increase in transportation reimbursement, how dramatic it is. And there was also a, a change of, of that new uh, Education Opportunities Act, the trillion dollar 20 year plan for Chapter 70 reform. Yeah. There was something that was done to the EQV, uh, a, a, a change in percentage, a half of a percent that was taken from the income from the town's gross income to the town's gross property tax. And that was one of the things that Senator Sines, the Hines and, and a couple others were able to get through without really people noticing or opposing it. Um, but that's not gonna give us more money, but um, what it will do is smooth out that difference so that I don't, I don't think we're ever gonna have a year again where it's gonna be a 10% difference yeah. in assessment in, in one year. Um, without the budget explode, without just something happening. I mean, that was just ordinary business, mm -hmm. and yeah. it resulted in that swing. Mm -hmm. So, um, so, so that's, that, and I think that came into effect in this as well. So, yeah, it was a reduction this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, e even though the gross amounts in the Chapter Seventy reform, we didn't. Conway got two thousand more. Frontier got eight thousand more. It didn't. We didn't get anything, but. That, what they did do, even though it didn't cost them any money, didn't cost the state money, it still helped us. So, um, if that makes sense. Okay. So, so bottom line, it's only 1.4% increase among all the schools. The tech school went down by 18, almost 19%. Yeah. And that brought everything else down. That looks great. Well, okay. Yeah, looks great. 1.4% increase. I mean, mostly because we're going to get a contract, so there's really not too much real. Well, the budget for our Conway teachers for next year just has a placeholder number. We do not have a negotiated contract for next year. Probably. We are on a one-year deal, yeah. which is halfway over. Right. Um, we signed it last month, and it's halfway over already. So. The you know, two biggest things to talk about the uh, Conway Grammar School would be four more than expected signing up for health care, which is going to be expected, and the other would be the uh, full-time SPED teacher who, I guess the position hasn't been hired yet, so that person could actually opt for health insurance too, right? Well, yeah, but that is a one-to-one -one position that's going to be funded by, uh, yeah, by, by the, the tuition. But not the health care, it's just the salary, right? Yeah, I, um, that's a good question. That's a good question. It, yeah, I don't know the answer to that. <coughs> um, so, do you know how many kids from the town go to the elementary school? Yeah. Yeah, because the uh, narrative we went over last year, we usually did, well, in the past, we've always had an estimation by grade, and I didn't see that, so I don't know. It's just, it's just for town meeting, people might ask what is, the number of children that are expected from school choice versus in town. Yeah, I, I know it's expected to stay flat or up one or down like one from last year, students, and, and that um, already the pre-K applications are stronger than they have been in a few years, and they're yeah. already up to um, uh, yeah, a number where they're already worried about taking school choice in pre-K. Um, right. So, so the, um, I, 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 I think that they try to limit that to 12 and that they're up 10 already or something like that. And it closes so, all thing, school choice in, in town residents, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah. I think so far it's all town residents, but for one. Okay. But but we do need more kids. And if anybody's watching out there, have kids. We need we need more kids in town. Uh, we need more families. There's not enough live births in our whole if, if, in our whole area. Uh, Deerfield in particular. Deerfield. In, uh, this is the fourth year in a row where they have fewer than ten live births in Deerfield. Wow. And in that's, Deerfield, yeah, fewer than ten correct. births. Correct. Correct. All of the town. Of yes, Deerfield. it is a problem. Wow. 
Ooh. It's um yeah. The so people are each going to have live births. Well, no, no, it's it, it's it's yeah. a pro it's a problem if you depend on oh, sure. immigration to for, for town pop you know from from outside the area. Um, so, um, so so far our population seems to be heading holding steadier than what was forecasted a couple years ago. Okay. <laughs> All right, any questions? Any more questions on the school budget? Well, just the capital improvements that we discussed last Thursday, you know, it would be helpful if, if uh, the business manager and the, and the school principal could each uh, team up and get actual quotes. I always get a little nervous when guesstimates come in. Yeah, so those are, um, I did, I, I did sp speak with Billy about that because you, you had said that at the at the thir at the yeah. Thursday thing, and he said he said those numbers are solid. There's quotes you can count on. Oh, yes, quotes. And um, All right, good. you know, it, 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 he he tried not to be too conservative. He tried not to make sure you know whatever. But yeah, you, good. Um, so you know, that, 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 in, in fact, he talked about how the quotes were the, the quotes were dip were, were you know. There was a, a, a bigger spread amongst the quotes oh, than he absolutely. thought. That's so, going on sort of, these days and yeah. Quotes all over, all over the map. Yeah. Thank you. I mean, my thought is looking at the budget in more detail. What we went over last Thursday is the majority of the increase is due to that's not that's loving and appropriate. It's due to negotiated salary increases. The sped teacher hiring is going to be covered by tuition. We don't know about it. The person opts for health insurance. If tuition was covered, I would assume probably not. But yeah, yeah and it. there was a reduction in it. There was a reduction in an aid, yeah, so there's one, one fewer aid, aid than was there last that's year. Covered by tuition because yeah, of, uh, yeah. the wings program. Right, right. So that that also yeah. is an impact. Um, okay. But mm. so yeah, there was a slight staff reduction. Student population the same. Nobody retiring. Know Nobody retiring this year, um, but we do have the possibility that there would be two or even three in the same year coming up, oh, okay. and that is the one issue that I've been trying to deal with. Um, but we, you know, that these are mm -hmm. uh, all three have like never taken a sick day. Um, so these and, are buying laws there. And we have this, no, this, uh, we, so we have a sick day, sick day reimbursement contractual language oh. um, that calls for two sick day compensation per year, um, two unused sick day per year for the entire, for, per year of service. So oh. if you have a teacher with 30 years and, yeah, it's, two, and it's at the current rate that, that they retire at, two days wow. um, times 30 years <laughs> adds up to be big numbers. Yes. And that was one, that was one of the, th my main goal in negotiating in general, just because it wasn't that long ago that Judy Siciliano, when she retired, that was a $34,000 number just for sick day reimbursement. Mm -hmm. And so when you look at what our total assessment increase is, um, of 48,000 yeah, 48, for the grammar school, that's 2.4%. If, if you have three retirements at the same time and they're all in the twenty to $25,000 range, mm -hmm you could potentially have a $75,000 uh, retirement sick day buyback um, at, uh, in, in the budget, which would have a regrettable effect on the budget as a, as a whole, for sure. Thank you. Okay. Well, you know, it'll take the, the plus out of the hiring the rookies at a lower pay. That's... Yeah, and it, I mean we're we're at that already, but the point the problem there is that you don't see a savings for twenty years from that, yeah. Yeah. and and it's hard for a union to accept that because. Yeah. Yeah. I have a question. Maybe, maybe a few, Tom. In terms of when uh, it's communicated, when is it when is it communicated to the town treasurer? When uh, like when does the open enrollment period go for health insurance? In other words, the town treasurer was kind of caught off guard this year with four. Unanticipated enrollees. Is there? Is it, is yeah. it possible to communicate that sometime when we're still in the budget draft? So cycle? actually, that that I don't know whether you were still there on Thursday night, but that was the main topic of conversation after you left, oh, okay. just about how can we can increase forecasting and predictability uh, because staff didn't go up. Right. So um, the the number historically the number increasing per, enrollment by two was historically a very good reasonable thing to do and um, yeah. how it went up to five it, it, it six it, it is is a mystery 
to the administration and they are uh, going to be looking into it and they're going to be uh, talking to staff about it oh, good. and to see that's, all. Um, that's one of the biggest increases in our town budget this year is the extra health insurance yeah. which, yeah. Yeah. and you know that's yeah that's it's that 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 to, I, I was as, as shocked as everybody because that's a big number in our town that's a big number yeah, that and our, uh, our, our waste disposal for tipping fees and that things like that. Both there are beyond our control. All right. And actually, what was suggested to me is that there's a number of private businesses that have cut back on their benefit and don't and, and eliminated the family health insurance benefit and just went to just the, just insuring the employee. Yeah. And that there's a suspicion that oh sure um, absolutely that we're we're picking up for. Yeah, because the union contract calls for the IA's anti. How much? What percentage of the health insurance is covered by by the uh, town? Is eighty percent? Seventy thirty. Seventy thirty. Frontier is eighty. Frontier is eighty. Yeah. Seventy thirty. Seventy thirty is pretty good. Frontier is eighty. Yeah. yeah. The state is eighty. Eighty. Um, so uh, the yeah um, that's that's a th those are those are big numbers. Yeah. 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 Well, that was. That must come up to in discussion when you negotiate salaries. Well, it's for 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 the Union Thirty Eight local. It's a big deal because it, it keeps us from doing it. It messes everything up because Sunderland's at sixty and forty, uh -huh. Whaley's at sixty forty, whatever Green whatever one hundred sixty five thirty five, and so the four towns all have different numbers, yes. and um, so compensation differs between the towns yes. and. Uh, you know, even when it's the same number in the Union 38 salary schedule, it's, it means different things in different towns, and it's not. It, um, yeah, they they know which towns pay more. Mm -hmm. Sure. Thank you. Um, okay. Good. All right, Tom. Next item school. is current um, town meeting warrant money articles. Yeah, there's some changes from the list uh, that you previously got. Um, first, uh, I have a new. Uh, one that's underlined here, number 10. Uh, Phil alluded to this earlier, and, and Alan, the uh, Conway Grammar School capital article. I now know that it's going to be $25,800. And it's not just carpet replacements. It, it's also um, door locking mechanisms and uh, a third item. Why do it? So that's, that's 25 uh, That's added now. Uh, and the Frontier Capital article came in at uh, 8,066. So there's capital articles from both the Grammar School and Frontier. <laughs> uh, the Conway Grammar School has its own capital stabilization fund, which is very handy. Yes. Uh, and uh, Frontier does not, so I'm suggesting that from, uh, from free cash we have enough for that. Uh, then down under uh, number 15, uh, since the last time I just added the items in case they get recommended uh, by the committee for the, uh, for the MVP grant and $4,000 for signage. Thanks. So those are... Um, so just, uh, just a few words about the Frontier um, our special warrant article. Those electric door holes, the, the central clock system, um, so the, the, those are, ne what's really, one of the things that's amazing to me is sitting back, so Frontier actually makes a choice every year, they have to make a choice between violating the, the state fire code and getting in trouble with the state fire marshal or violating the uh, Americans with Disability Act. And make, so the, the building was designed before many, of the, and, and they have the, all these heavy, heavy doors that were designed as, as fire doors so that when you walk down a hallway, it's a series of opening big, heavy doors. And so when they hold, when they keep them uh, pinned open, then the, the disabled kids have access to the entire building and they can get through, but it's against the fire code. Um, it's because those are fire doors and they're meant to be closed to keep fire from spreading. And so, so what's missing, what has been missing, and we haven't been able to, they haven't been um, uh, able to do it yet, uh, is these electric door holds so that the, a person in a wheelchair can hit the button on either side and the door opens, which is what you see everywhere. But yeah. it's yeah. It, you know, it's two or three years of before the school can really even put it 
find a way to ask for it. Um, and so it's like that. That's a really important thing. I think just um, you don't want to be getting chased by the state fire marshal every year. You don't want to be getting you know whatever. So, for insurance reasons. Yeah, the, 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 the whole notion of like picking your poison about which inspector do you do you get whatever is just bad. And you shouldn't have to do that. So if we can get fixed, it's not a problem. Exactly. Yeah. That, so this will fix it. Good. All right, Tom, no other changes then? Uh, there is one possible change. Um, Tom, I was talking to the, the, the MV, MVP. Yeah, that's a municipal, that acronym for? That's municipal vulnerability preparedness. has to do with um, uh, climate change uh, readiness. And this is for some South River projects and culvert uh, redesign so that we're ready. They also will give out grants for culvert construction, but not until you have a design done. So, so this, um, is, a, this is great. First step in that process, and also to to come up with uh, a complete list of where we want to might want to make zoning changes uh, or other changes around the South River. Uh, including easements that would keep people from building in areas that were especially vulnerable. Uh, these, you know, school. <laughs> it, you see it on the in the Cape all the time, where people build in places that get, you know, especially on oh, yeah, the beach, they get washed away. But also just in low lying areas, if the tide gets high, people, there's flooding all over the place. Well, similar things happen in large rainstorms sure. out in Western Mass, as we learned during Irene. So this is an attempt to identify um, all of the measures that we might take, including planning and zoning measures uh, and easements mm -hmm. that would um, help us to help the people not need their insurance. So there's also um, a, a pending CPA request by the grammar school for playground. Oh, okay. Did you hear about that? So that, that's fresh off the presses today. Um, is that going to come out of their stabilization fund? It's a C. It's going to be a CPA request. It's going to be a CPA request. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, and there, there is one other item. Uh, because of the complexities, um, the uh, un, under the capital improvements article, it might be necessary to pull the six wheel truck out. Mm -hmm because we have applied for a grant that if we got it... Well, that's the VW grant, right? I'm sorry? That's the Volkswagen. Yeah. Uh, this is actually not the Volkswagen oh. one. That is in a state of limbo because DEP apparently screwed up. They, nobody's getting funded after the first round. And I'm not sure of the details. I'm getting a briefing on that soon, I hope. Okay. Um, maybe Friday. So this is a grant um, from the USDA or something? But this is a different grant. Um, and it's, it may also, it, it's a related grant because it has to do with emissions and reducing emissions. So it's either EPA or, or DEP, but it's a separate grant from the Volkswagen. And the idea is that um, we'll either you know, we, we need the new truck, and, and we can either get it with the, the 240000 or if we get the grant, then that 240000 would pay the town match for replacing three of our six-wheel trucks. So if we get just the two hundred and forty, we'll use it for the truck and resell it. If we get the grant, we'll use it for the three trucks, but in that case, we actually have to destroy the trucks we're replacing, oh. or at least their engines. So we get to keep all the parts, but we have to destroy the engines and the frame because they're, um, that's, that's what the grant goes with. So they're, because of they're those very old. We're not going to sell those. Because of those complexities, yeah. um, it would probably be best dealt with in a separate article that says either we're going to do this with the 240 or we're going to do this with the 240. Either it goes for a new truck or it's a grant match for three new trucks. Okay. And, and there's no way really to fit that comfortably in the uh, in a single capital. Yeah. These are at least three trucks. 
Sorry? Have you seen three? Well, we bought one last year, and we're going to be buying, replacing the other three over the next few years. Uh, there, there aren't three trucks in this year's article. Yeah. There's one truck, one big truck. So you'll have, a, so you'll have more Just idea one. what's what well, one approaches by 40, the time the time work yeah. goes up. But he's saying three. Don't no, look at no we will not truck. know whether we got the grant until after town meeting. Oh, so we have to. Uh, so this is why it's an either or article. All right. All right. So the the application of the grammar school um, of the school committee to for CPA um, was just filed. Uh, How much? Two hours ago. Well, there'll be meeting so, on Monday. And it's it's in a, the amount is requested is two hundred thousand mm. dollars for a new playground. Correct. Mm. And they'll uh, um, they're meeting Monday. Oh. So yeah, well, we've got that in reserve certainly. We got one million. Okay. It's good for recreation. So yeah, the, the current playground is not compliant with um, current applicable safety codes. It's not compliant with the American with Disability Act. Uh, the surface is it's it's past its lifespan. Didn't we just do a new playground like seven eight years ago? That was you know all this stuff is oh, that was oh that was this here playground. that was here. Oh, okay. I'm okay. Okay. This one would be even better. Okay. So yeah, can play on there's too. a whole four playgrounds. Adults and seniors can play on it too. We really? We could? If we wanted to. Extra wide we'd probably get hurt. <laughs> <laughs> we, we could put the old highway trucks there and kids could clamber all over them. Yeah, we have to say no release form, John, if you go with it all. The what? A release form. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> That's for seniors. All right. Okay, any other things that we need to know on, on these, Tom? Uh, no, those are the changes from last time. Those are the changes, okay. So they'll have a lot of explaining to do with this grant uh, for the highway. Oh, yeah. Highway with any luck, Bob will do it. Uh, or Ron. <laughs> <laughs> we'll probably spend time on that more than anything else. <laughs> right, we have any other budget items, Tom? Uh, I have nothing right okay. now. All right. Um, okay, we're down to... Uh, Concerns of the selectmen. Do we have any concerns, selectmen? No. Good. Mail. Oh, what do we got in mail? That's the purple one. Yeah, the purple one is mail. Thank you. Thank you, finance, for coming in. Wow. Helping us solve all these problems. Wait, this is the universe. Thank you. Uh -huh. And you went above and beyond by attending the, 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 new, the, the new visitor meeting. Yeah. Uh, we have a letter from um, Frontier Regional and Union 38 School District from our uh, superintendent, uh, Darius Modesto, about uh, this happens every year. The school committee is requesting that you approve the proposed amendment, which would reallocate $115,676 of excess and deficiency funds, which is basically their free cash, uh, for purposes of addressing larger maintenance and equipment replacement. See attached list. Uh, this is the list we saw before. Okay. So everybody knows about that. So I'll put that on the next agenda. Yeah. Okay. And we, we got to uh, just take a vote on this. Uh, we have 45 days um, to vote on it. So we'll do it at the next step. Uh, we'll note that our tech school does not request from its member towns permission to spend its EMP. Um, well, and, and, and when they were here, they, I mean, the, one of the things that Frontier does is that they never spend more than half of the EMP. They always return at least half to lower assessments, sure. Um, which is a policy, not a legal requirement. Yeah. What, what, one of the things that surprised me from the gentleman from Franklin Tech was that they spend every penny in the E&D, and, okay. and they don't request the permission from the towns, even though the laws would seem to state that they must. Mm. OK. We also got a letter from the Franklin Regional yeah. Council of Governments, uh, which is the, um, the budget advisory notice which tells us what our uh, program fees will be for this next year. Okay. Uh, and
and this is this is voted on at the town meeting. So is this what's, what's the number you've been waiting for, Tom? Yeah, what's the you number, Tom. Yeah, yeah. Is, we're 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 in good shape. You guys have you guys seen this? No. What's is there an increase? Uh, a bit. Yeah. Yeah. There is a lot of it is from the accounting program because they hired a new part-time person because uh, the ones that they have are pretty much flat out and there's no room for um, there's no slack at all in scheduling and towns aren't getting um, towns are feeling like they're not getting ahead they're just treading water so they hired a new half-time person, and that's, uh, I think, an extra $4,000 in our assessment. That accounts for the majority of it. Yeah, it's hard to look at this without, without the context of what it was the year before, the year before that. That's, you can't really make heads or tails. Well, that, yeah, that's, that's the major, in, that's the major, Portion of the increase and reason for it. Yeah, we, we made out we made out very well this year. Uh, I'm on the finance committee up at FERCOG, so I, I know that we we made out, we made out very well. Okay, next item. Uh, any announcements? Any announcements? No. Okay. Uh, our next meeting is scheduled for Monday, February 24th, here at 6 p.m., and we'll have a joint meeting with the Finance Committee at 6.30 p.m. Um, okay, and now we have an executive session for reason one to conduct contract negotiations uh, with the town administrator. Uh, we'll go into executive session and we will adjourn from executive session and adjourn from the meeting. Uh, Phil, sure. you vote to go into executive session? Bob, yes. you will go and I'll go into executive session.